it's just like traveling. You, yeah. know, you hear people, they say, oh, it's life changing when they go to a country because yeah. it's, it's the whole culture. It's the whole experience. Yeah. When you actually go to Mexico, you know, you're experiencing the whole thing. And that was part of when I went there. I was there for two weeks in Mexico City. I wanted to have a day where I, people are like, are you sure you want to do that? You, you don't really know Spanish very well. How are you going to get around? But I got an Uber and yeah. I just went in the heart of Aww. the city and yeah. I went to the flea markets. Yeah. I went to those markets where you're like covered in just like store after store. Yeah. It's like a maze. Yeah. And I didn't know the language, but I learned to speak the basics. Yeah. Um, that's what I need to do. I made friends there where like I hung out in some of the shops and yeah. I purchased things, but we hung out just talking. Some a couple of people knew a little bit of English Aww. and uh, just made all these friends or like, yeah. I didn't know. Uh, certain things and somebody standing in line they came over and helped me and they translated for me yeah and it was just cool to be like in the culture and then you go to the art museum mexico apparently has like some of the greatest art in the world wow i didn't, I know, didn't know that wow i didn't know that and they have a museum that uh people go travel to around the world to see like incredible art yeah and uh they also have fashion week there i didn't know that either That's so fine. I that, love yeah it was crazy it was like <laughs> You know, you, you're looking at all these models going into the show, you know, mm -hmm. as it's happening. And uh, I just started connecting with the people and then they were like wanting to take pictures. And, you know. and so before you know it, like my buddy's like, let's head to this downtown center where there's some, some event was happening. And uh, he turns around and he's just like, hey, man, like, what are you doing? And then like, there's like a line of people and then I'm all of a sudden taking pictures of the people and like talking with them. And we were out there to shoot a commercial, but it was just like, <laughs> it was amazing. Like yeah. we felt like we were out there at three or four in the morning shooting commercials, but we were just like also having a blast getting Aww. to know the people, you know, so. That's so cute. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I think it's important to know the culture. It's it gives you context when you're eating something, like where that came from, why why they do what they do, and you know, the whole process, it makes it all more enjoyable, so. It's just interesting, like I love stories, I just love people's stories, yeah. you know, so it's almost like a story of a whole culture, mm -hmm. you know, like I think it's fascinating to kind of understand like, why do they do that? Mm -hmm. You know, not in a judgmental way, but just in a like, it's fascinating to me. Yeah. You know, like I grew up in, I was born in a town of 300 people yeah. in the middle of cornfields in Ohio. Wow. So, <laughs> Ohio. It's called LaRue, Ohio. La so, Rue. like 300 people, you know, everyone pretty much looked the same. Yeah. You know, yeah. like there was like zero diversity. Yeah. And, you know, so to me, I've always been fascinated by just like different kinds of people and, you mm -hmm. know, different cultures and stuff because I didn't really. I didn't really grow up with that, mm -hmm. you know? So it's always been fun for me to yeah. experience it. And yeah, That's awesome. it's really special, I think. So. That's so cool. Yeah. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for another episode with a special guest today. She is an author, a podcast host, and content creator. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Lindsay Morgan Snyder. <laughs> Lindsay's in the house today and an uh, awesome friend of mine. And I met you when? Oh, gosh. That's a good question, was Kel. It, was you it know, four years ago? You know, we met right before I went to Bethel. Yeah. We were at, uh, we were at Andrew Epps. Andrew Epps' house. Place. Yes, I and I came. Him. Yes, and like I came there for one reason, but then you and I connected yeah. and you encouraged me so much. Yeah. And it was just a huge blessing. You were, were you writing a book at the time. I think you you had already written one, and you were right talking about writing another one. Maybe, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's hard to remember exactly, it was like four, but was it four years ago? Four or five years? I ago? think so. Yeah, yeah. it was so a while it was four ago. Four or five years ago, and he, so you were talking about writing another one, but you're also going up to Bethel. Yeah. So there was kind of like a little crossroads thing you were doing. You're at point you're at in your life a little bit, but yeah, it was really cool to meet you. I yeah. was so encouraged by you. It was, it was <laughs> one of those divine appointments, yeah, you know, yeah. where like I came for one reason. I came to meet Andrew for something and then he got busy and you and I were just sitting at that same table yeah. and it was just like a God thing right. because everything you said was just like lifting my spirit and yeah. encouraging me. So yeah. yeah, it was really special. That's so cool. I know, it was wow. cool. <laughs> That's amazing. And so you're here in LA. How long have you been in LA? Eight years, eight years, almost okay. nine in May, which wow. is crazy. I know. Yeah, I guess that's kind of close for me too. Yeah, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. When did you get here? 
I think it was 2014. Me too. Really? Yeah, August. Amazing. August 8th. Oh, wow. I came in May okay. of 20, yeah, 2014. Wow. So, yeah. That's, so we came here at literally the same... That's insane. God was calling some people out. <laughs> and you came... Did you come from Ohio or was it... Atlanta. Atlanta, okay. Yep. yep. So... Wow. Yeah. I know. It was really special. It was not my plan, Kel. I don't know if it was your plan, but it was not my plan to come to LA. It definitely wasn't my plan. <laughs> It's just the Lord used, I was in probably one of the most painful situations in my life mm. to 2013. Mm. And then the Lord used that to move me out and say, I'm calling you out of Reading. And I was like, oh my gosh, I was so comfortable here. I just got a raise. I was on staff. <laughs> and, and like, you know, but you know, a, a traumatic situation happened and then the Lord was like, it's time. Mm. And I was like, oh man, he's like, where do you want me to go? He's like, the place that scares you the most. And I said, ah, oh, dang. Yeah, I knew what that was. Yeah. It was LA, because I always would say, when we traveled here eight years in a row, we did eight Jesus cultures. Oh, wow. And then, I, plus, I started to do stuff with Kim's solo career, Kim Walker mm. Smith. And so, I always we traveled here. I said, oh, gosh, Lord, I would never move here. I would never <laughs> raise a family. So, I always tell people, never say never. Exactly. You know, people say, I would never go to Africa and live in a dung hut. You wouldn't catch me raising a family doing this and that. And I'm like, and they would end up there. Yeah, exactly. Like, oh, we're missionaries. And you're like, what happened? I thought you said you would never. I know, right? You know, but yeah. it is, it's just how the Lord works. It's I like, know. never say never. So. I know. He loves to turn those stories around, doesn't he? Yeah, right. So, yeah. How, how has your journey been since you've been here in L.A.? What's, what's that look like for you? Yeah, I mean, you know, my story is I I didn't meet Jesus until I was 31. Whoa. Yeah. And that's 40, cool. I know. It was very cool. And I'm 45 now. So I've been yeah. 13 years with him, yeah. um, which has been amazing. But I, you know, I was, I met Jesus in the South, right? Like wow. where I know the Bible belt. So came very real to me there. And uh, it just, you know, he did a lot of healing and brought mm. a lot of spiritual parents and mentors around me during that time. But then. Mm. You know, I, at this one point said, God, I will go anywhere and do anything for you. I mean, he mm -hmm. just changed my life so radically. Mm -hmm. And I was literally thinking Africa and God said, I need missionaries in Hollywood, which was not what I wanted to that do. That was not typical. I yeah. didn't even know like anything about Hollywood. Yeah. I had honestly stopped watching television for like this weird, like eight year period. So mm -hmm. like, I knew nothing about it. Yeah. I didn't even know people wrote the content that we watched on TV. Yeah, like right. that's how naive I was about like, <laughs> yeah. what went on out here. I had no idea. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, it was kind of weird when I heard that, but um, the way he does, you know, I just saw this billboard, you know, that was like direct flights from Atlanta to, LA and I felt the Lord putting on my heart go out there and just like do a survey of the land trip mm, you know kind of like yeah. the Bible and I thought and my mentors were like yeah Lynn's you know they agreed so I went and just like you I'm like I will never live here like it just yeah. I could feel the yeah. rejection yeah. I could feel the pain of the city yeah. and I was like no way yeah. I will never come here well you know nine months later <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's like, or maybe oh. it was a year and nine months it was yeah. you know, just a couple of years after yeah, like yeah. here she is you know <laughs> and I'll be honest I was scared mm -hmm. and it was hard yeah. <laughs> you know it was really it it's like it brought up all of these other fears that were floating around inside that mm. I didn't know were in there. Yeah. And it was pretty intense, you yeah. know? And um, I'll be honest, this is sort of a humbling thing to say, but I thought I was here to like save Hollywood, you know? Mm. And God was like, well, honey, first they need to heal you. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's kind of embarrassing to admit, but that's kind of how I thought, you yeah. know? And, yeah. um, but, you know, luck is, the first six months I was part of a church and then I felt like God was like, okay, you know, and the, the one thing that I had learned in my first six years of being a Christian was like, there was like this, there were these two different worlds, you know, mm -hmm. I had been saved in kind of this very, um, uh, church welcoming to the, you know, non-Christian, right? Yeah. And I forget, seeker friendly, they're called. Seeker friendly, yeah. I was saved in one of those churches. So I have so much reverence and I just think what they do is beautiful because mm -hmm. that's where I was saved, you know? Mm -hmm. But then I was flipped into this very Pentecostal world, which I saw the gifts of the spirit rolling and, you know, all that. So that's, I knew- two extremes right I knew there. that was real, <laughs> yeah. you know? So as this new little Christian girl, I'm like, this is real, this is real. They don't necessarily always agree i because i had friends in this camp and friends in this camp and they didn't always agree and i thought 
I don't know, God, who's right and who's wrong? And I felt like the Lord whispered to me, well, neither's all the way right and neither's all the way wrong, mm -hmm. you know? And so when I was coming to LA, I, I was scared. Yeah, right. <laughs> and in my journal, I wrote, God, I just want a church that's word and spirit. Mm. And the second time I went to visit Vintage, which oh, is, yeah. uh, you know, where I see you sometimes, um, the second time I went to visit, the pastor said, we are called to be a word and spirit church. You're and right. for me, that was confirmation. Right, this yeah. is where I'm supposed to be. Yeah. And that's where I'm in a lot of beautiful community. And so yeah. I think the community really did help me, you know, throughout the time. And Vital, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Especially yeah. in this city. Yeah. That. So when I first moved here, before I moved, I was looking for housing and, you know, work and um a girl from E58 told me this. She used to go to Bethel and she told me, she said, you know, more than anything, she's like, I'll totally be looking for like housing and stuff for you and all that, you know, but she's like, more than anything, Kelly, I would really encourage you to pray about is and to find mm -hmm. before you move here is community. Wow. She's like, community is going to be more important than a job mm. it's going to be more important than connections it's like she was like this is vital if yeah. you're going to be in a city like la and, and be a christian like you have to have community and so i thought that was fascinating but when i got here i think she was right because i was like i ended up being I don't know about you, but the first six months were very hard in oh, particular. Yeah. I was yes. like, it was a testing of, yeah. you know, your faith. Uh, it was, you know, I found myself at the end of myself at times, you know, and it's like where I end and God began yeah. something new in me. Because so I was just like, I don't know, <laughs> you know, but um, there was a point where I was homeless and, and things like that. But. I had community and mm. that helped me continue to grow spiritually. Mm -hmm. And uh, I always had a place I could run to and get prayer and prophecies. There's somebody always having something at their house or, or when I got into acting school, a couple mm. of us did it together mm -hmm. and, you know, I didn't have a car so they would, you know, pick me up and then we would go together and pray and then hang out afterwards and eat. And so uh, I just thought like, wow, this is, she's right. Yeah. You know, this is vital. If you're going to be in L.A., you got to have community. You know? Yeah, it's so true. It's so true. And I went to Bethel after I'd been to L in L.A. for four years. So mm -hmm. I kind of need to break, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> you know, from L.A. So that's yeah. been when I went up to Reading for two years. OK, so, yeah. Yeah. So I kind of did that like after I'd been in L.A. for a while. It was good. It was a good break for me. Yeah, because Reading is slow pace. <laughs> Oh my gosh, it's like... They're very different, yeah. Oh man, it, I went up there to visit last and it was just like, I felt, you could, there was people kind of looking at me because I was driving like I was still in LA. <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah, it, it just, they're like, where are you rushing off to? I'm like, the freeway is open. I'm going, baby. <laughs> Fast lane all the so way. True, yeah. But it's just like, because Reading, like, the freeway is just like, just open. You know, yeah, you're like, exactly. oh, it's all the space. I'm going to get there in like five minutes, you know? <laughs> and so, but I, if you stay in Reading like a week or more, you start to, realize like slow down yeah. and you start to take things slower and then you start to realize you're driving more relaxed you're driving more chill yeah your interactions are more chill you know yeah, so true. i think that's where i learned a lot of patience was mm -hmm. being up and ready yeah 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 it was a nice reset for me yeah. you know it did remind me um yeah, I remember the first week I was there, I was like going to something and I was 30 minutes early, yeah. you know, because in LA you're leaving like 45 right, minutes yeah. early, you know, and then- Cause you never I, know that travel. <laughs> no. And I pull up and you know, it's in downtown, which is so cute. And I was like, like, where's the meter? Oh, you don't have to pay to park here. Like it was, it was really cute. So yeah. it was a really healing time for me. I really went up just to get kind of my own healing. Right. You know? Yeah. So it was, it was really healthy. But then I've been back for, I think, three years. Three years. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's cool. So it's been, it's been a lot. I mean, I think that there's just been a lot of testing and pruning and, mm -hmm. you know, some brick walls that you run into, right? Yeah. <laughs> but it's okay because God uses it, you know, yeah. to, to get you where he wants you. And yeah. so, you know, I don't like it when I'm in the middle of it, but when you come out of it, you're like, wow, I mm -hmm. am a lot stronger. Right. You know, I am a lot more myself. Yeah. Like it's a good thing, but it's not fun per se. 
when you go through, when you've gone through a time of transformation and healing, have you ever like lost a part of yourself in that process? But then you're like, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm better, but I still kind of miss that whole part. You ever had that where you're like, man, I still miss that other little, that little girl side of me or that little part, you know? I don't think so. Yeah. To be real honest with you, yeah. no. I mean, the pain is not fun, you yeah. know? Like, it's not fun. I'm not gonna pretend it was. Yeah, right. But no, because I find that it strips things off of you mm -hmm. that made you less of who you were originally created to be. Yeah. You know, and I think that's the goal, right? Is to yeah. become who we were originally created to be, like when God knit us together yeah. in our mother's womb. And that was my prayer, yeah. you know, a few years back, like, God, I want to be and do what you originally created me to be and do. Mm. Like, what was in your heart that you created me for? I don't want to do anything else. Yeah. I mean, of course you have to sometimes for money or whatnot, but I'm just yeah. saying like, that's what I want to go after, mm -hmm. you know? And no, I like myself way better than I used to. <laughs> right, yeah. Yeah, I think for me, I think what for, for me it was kind of a struggle because I, there was parts of myself when I first came to the Lord and started going, you know, became a student in ministry school. Mm. I, I missed that innocence mm. of like, oh God, what should I, I was telling Colleen, I was oh, like, yeah. what should I wear today? And you know, like, I was just like, there's just like an innocence, like a child. Yeah. But I think when you go through life, you go through a lot of pain and trauma, and then you kind of come out on the other side of it. You're still, you're evolving. So you're constantly evolving in life, you know, mm -hmm. and growing into and transforming into like who God's called you to be. But there's things that fall away, you know, there's things that are missing. And some, some things are meant to fall away and some things just get lost in the translation because of X amount of pain or trauma you've been through. And you're learning to grow into who you are now after the trauma or the pain, you know? Yeah. So I think sometimes I, I sometimes miss that little boy who is just kind of like, you know, super naive and joyful all the time. You know? I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's, what you're saying, yeah. that's a, you know, but you also thank God for the transformation because I, I look back at, like for instance, I watched a TV show when I was back in those times I was in ministry school. Mm. But then I, I found it on Hulu again. I started watching it again. I was like, why does everything seem so different? And I realized yesterday that I was looking through a different lens because I was more younger and naive. Oh, I didn't wow. realize what was happening. Oh, wow. And now that I'm older and my eyes are open, mm -hmm. I it's like I could see things more clearly for what mm -hmm. they are. And so I'm like, this is cool. Like I've grown, I've evolved. I have more language to put to certain situations than I didn't have before, that I didn't have before. Yeah. So yeah, there's, there's like amazing, you know, Amazing parts about transformation, but there's also some parts you're like, man, I kind of miss you, you know, <laughs> just that little, that little kid, you know. I feel like it's like aging, though, you know, like because yeah. I'm 45, I'm gonna be 46 in a couple years, you know. Yeah. And for women, it's like a thing. I don't know if it is for men as much, yeah. but you know. But I always think of it like this, like, yeah, of course, like when you are younger, like you know, you don't have wrinkles, and, you know, all these things uh, that yeah. women worry about. Um, but when you're older, you have wisdom that you didn't have yes. when you were 20, you 100%, 100%. know? And it's almost like God is like, he's not gonna give us everything all at once, you yeah. know? Because it's like, well, then you would just like, you wouldn't, you wouldn't embrace like getting older if there wasn't something good about it, mm. you know? And, and I feel like that's kind of what you're saying with Christianity, yeah. you know? There's like, there's something so special in the beginning where it does feel like God just does a bunch of things for you and you don't have to really participate, mm. you know? Yeah. But then as you grow and mature, and I've only known the Lord for 13 years, so yeah. I'm not, you know, you've probably known him longer, but yeah. you know, in my process, you know, the older I get, the more he's like, okay, like mm -hmm. you, you know, you can participate with this, you know, yeah. like you can partner with me in this. Like, I don't have to do this for you now. Yeah. Just like babies, you know, like right. they have to be fed in the beginning and yeah. then they start to figure it out, you know? Yeah. So yeah, I think that there's joy in both, but mm -hmm. yeah, it does change and change is kind of weird sometimes. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I, I think it's so weird. You're like, man, like, if I can pick and choose, that would be awesome. <laughs> I've heard people say that. Like, yeah, like, can I have the young, like looking face and body and also have the wisdom? God's like, no, that's not how we work. But for me, it wouldn't be the looks. It would be, oh, I don't no. really care so much about that, but it's more like, I want that 
I want that like adventurous kid. Who, I mean, I, I, I like, I had crazy faith back in, you yeah, know. Yeah, so that's true. I think when you go through life, sometimes it shell shocks you. You have to like, <laughs> you, you find yourself trying to get back there. Like, you know, there's a certain level of strength and spirituality that that you experience. You're like, I want that again. Yeah. I want God to do it again. It's like kind of experiencing revival and then a revival goes away Aww. for a season, yeah. you know, for a church or a community. And then yeah. you're like, I want that again. Yeah. But you know that God is still doing new, something new. Totally. And it's different. So you mm. celebrate that, but you're yeah. also like, if I can have, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If like, I can have both. If I have that amazing. time of renewal again, a mix with the wisdom I have now. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's kind of like you get like, um, you get like a, you come into like a lump sum of cash. Right. Or an inheritance. Yeah. For instance, you know, we've all had a time of inheritance in our life where we came into a large lump sum and, and then you're like, you were younger. So you were, what they call it, young and dumb. And so you, you may have made some decisions yeah. that weren't as great. Exactly. Be like, man, if that happened to me again with the wisdom I have now, I will have diverse portfolios. <laughs> I'll be investing in gold stocks. Gold stocks. <laughs> I'll make it not stretch right and down. live forever. You know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was yeah. like, well, that's not happening again. So, but, oh, okay. I just, just let you know. I've gone through and I know. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. yeah. No, it's so true. Yeah. I get it. Well, tell us what it's like to be an author. Tell us a little bit about your book and and what does it mean, you know? What yeah. is what is like what is the process of your book and, and when you're writing and all that stuff like that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um so I started writing when I still had my corporate job. I was in sales and marketing yeah. and I would just write like uh, during my lunch break, actually, mm -hmm. you know, I just started writing a blog like yeah. 12 years ago, like yeah. back when blogging was a thing, it was cool. Yeah. Um, but nobody really read it. I didn't feel like, you know, it never made me any money. And yeah. like, there was no like really accolades around it. It was just me and God, you know, and, That's cool. and he really taught me how to communicate with him and commune with him mm. through writing. Okay. And it really healed a lot of shenanigans in my soul. Wow. When I learned to communicate with God through writing, it just was so healing to me. So I loved doing it. Mm. So I would just write, write, write. I mean, journals, thousands probably of journals. Like just- I envy you. I have big handwriting, so it's not like I have yeah. tiny handwriting, but I just loved talking with God in my journal. You know? so good. It was so fun. I love it. I, I honestly said if I ever got stuck on an island by myself, I would need obviously my Bible, a pen, and a journal. That's mm. all I would need, and I'd be very happy. That's so good. Um, so anyway, all that to say is, you know, had this blog that didn't have much attention for a good eight years, you mm. know? And when I was in LA, God said, hey, I want you to turn that blog into a book. Mm. Well, I had no idea how to do that, but Google knows how to do everything. So I'm like, Google, how to turn a blog into a book? And I found this very simple, like eight step plan. I'm like, I'm gonna do that. So wow. I just started to put it together that way. Now, of course, four years later and a thousand rewrites, you know, it became a book, but, um, but my problem was I uh, was scared. <laughs> of course, <laughs> right? yeah. So, so I, you know, God had to kind of trick me. You know how he does sometimes? Yes. Jehovah Sneaky. Yeah. Um, so I had worked this corporate job and actually was making the most money I'd ever made in my life, doing mm. really, really well financially. Yeah. And then he had me walk away from that and go on what I call like a creative sabbatical, mm. but really was also learning how to trust God in kind of a different way. Yeah. And during that time, you know, I kind of hung my hat out as a writer and, and I got like these kind of corporate writing gigs and stuff. Um, but then I was hired to help someone write a book. Wow. And I said, well, I've never read a, never written a book before. And she goes, but I've read your blog and I know you could help me write a book. And I was like, okay. Like she had more faith in me than I did. Yeah. So I ended up helping her. And then I went to Bethel. And when I was at Bethel, I was broke, like mm. baroque, like broke as can be. Yeah. And so I was looking for any kind of work, you know? And sometimes I think when you're kind of desperate, your fears do kind of have to take the back seat because yeah. you like, you just jump over things because yeah. you have to, you, have you know, to. it's almost survival. Yeah. So sometimes it can be like a good thing. And, and so, um, Anyway, I was up there and, and uh, a mentor of mine was like, well, I have a friend who wants to write a book. And long story short, I ended up ghostwriting this book for this person up mm. there. 
and it paid for my first year of ministry school. Wow. And so it was very like helpful. Well, I wrote this person's book in four months. Now my book I'd been working on for three years. <laughs> and the Lord very kindly said to me, hey, Linz, you just finished that book in four months. I don't want you to do anything else with your free time until you finish your book. Mm. And I was like, what's wrong with me? Why can't I, you know, why can't I uh, finish this book? Yeah. And God said, because you're scared. Mm. And I said, what am I scared of, God? He said, you're scared that you're going to lead people astray. You're scared that people won't like it. So yeah. he started telling me my own fears, which wow. is helpful. And I said, you're right. That is what I'm, that is what I'm scared of. And he said, I said, what should I do? And he goes, write it anyway. Mm -hmm. He's like, some people won't like it, but write it anyway. Yeah. And I was like, huh. so my people pleasing is being like chopped off, you yeah, know? Right. And so, so I did, I finished the book. Um, like he said, I got off Instagram, which I'll love me some Instagram. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like I had to kind of like put all the things away yeah. and just focus. And it was like, I mean, I've never had a child, but like, it was like birthing a child. Like it was intense, you know, yeah. the, la the end of it was so hard to get out, mm -hmm. but it is like, it's like, sounds so goofy. People are probably like, she's so weird, but like, it was like my little baby. Like I love it, you yeah. know, and it's gone out in the world. I've sold like a thousand books and yeah. you know, people have said it's helped them and that just makes me so happy. You wow. know? So yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I, I really think anytime you're birthing a dream, it's totally like a baby, <laughs> you know, <laughs> well, you spend, you know, seasons carrying that, you know, within you. And then all of a sudden the Lord's like, release it. <laughs> you're like, Oh gosh. <laughs> And then you're like paralyzed with fear and you know, it's like, oh man, you know, but yeah, no, it's, I could totally see that, you know? Yeah. What was that like for you when you finally released it? And, you know, it's kind of like, you know, putting yourself on display for the world to see, cause it's all your inner writings and your inner thoughts and revelations. And what was that like when you first put it out there? Luckily I was at Bethel and so okay. I had so much encouragement. Solid community. Yeah, solid yeah. community, a ton of, you know, it's such an encouraging yeah. environment. That You're gonna change the world. <laughs> You're like, yes, one book at a time. <laughs> and it was really sweet because, you know, I, I've never been married and I don't have children, but I have a million friends who have been married and have children. And I've, yeah. I've done a pretty good job, I think it's celebrating those people. I yeah. love when that happens for people, right. you know? And so it was really sweet of God because I felt like it was my season to be celebrated. Yeah. And so people out of nowhere in different cities I had lived popped up and they were like, Lindsay, I want to throw a book launch party for you. Ooh, that's so cool. God took me on this like little book launch tour yeah. that was completely funded and planned by God. You know, wow. like I didn't ask anyone. Like it was just like they popped up and they just put on these great parties for me. Mm. And it was so fun. And I felt like he said like, all the like seeds you've sown, like just celebrating people are gonna come back to you in this season. And mm. that really did happen. And it was, it was super fun. Wow. Like it's really fun to celebrate accomplishments, you yeah. know? Yeah. So it was really fun. And then God downloaded this whole cool idea for me on how to market the book. Okay. Cause I had zero dollars. So right. um, it was just gonna be wisdom from God, yeah. you know? And he, he gave me this whole plan. I, I honestly don't even remember what it was or I totally share it, but um, there's probably new wisdom at this time anyway. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it was, it worked. Wow. Like the plan he gave me worked. Most, my book is self-published through like Amazon. Okay. Um, most self-published authors, they say make less than $500. Mm. And I sold like over a thousand books wow. just with no money. So it was totally the Lord Yeah. and they're still selling. And so it was just like cool to see him, like me do what he said, but then him kind of blow on it. Right, like, yeah. you know, just, and I just, more than anything, I'm a words of affirmation girl. So when people message me or write on my Amazon, like this, you know, book really helped me. My mm -hmm. heart is just like, <gasps> yeah. like I love helping people, yeah. you know? So my heart just gets so big and fluffy when that happens. <laughs> you, you almost have that feeling like, if it was just for the one, Lord, I'll do it all over again, you know? <laughs> well, that's what God, I mean, I, I worked for a ministry for a little while, helping them with marketing and stuff. Yeah. And, and that gal always told me, Lindsay, write for an audience of one. Mm. She's the one who told me that, write for an Facing audience the of wall. one. Yep, so I always listen to her. How important is it to not just journal, but to journal with God? Yeah. Yeah, because I know that was a part of uh, your book and it talked about journaling with God. That's something I'm 
starting to do, the Lord spoke to me about. So I, I'm curious to hear your revelation on that. Yeah, it's so fun. Um, in my book, I call it journaling with Jesus. But then later he gave me another name for it. He called it scripting. Mm. And he said, because it's a prescription for the soul. Wow. I know. I thought that was so cool of God. Say that again. <laughs> Say it one more time for those listening. <laughs> he said, um, he said it call it scripting mm. because it's a prescription for the soul. <sighs> wow. And prescription for the soul. Man. You know, it's like it's like medicine for the soul. So yeah. when when you know I teach people how to do this, it's like, you know, he's really so my book's called Letting Love In. Letting Love In, yeah. But I'm not really talking about romantic love. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the love of God. Divine. Right? Come I mean, on. the Bible says God is love. Mm. It doesn't say he created love. It doesn't say he's the best at love. It says God is love. That's right. So like letting love in is really letting God in. Absolutely. Into our mind, will, mm. and emotions, you know? And I'm all about the inner world. Like yeah. I love to talk about the inner world. Right, yeah. <laughs> I'm just like obsessed with it in a weird way. I love you that. You know, and so I'm always like talking about that and um so anyway back to scripting like what i teach people it's really simple but i thought everyone knew how to do it and then when i would like i speak sometimes at like smaller conferences and stuff which mm -hmm. i love doing but mm -hmm. um but then COVID hit and you know then i started a podcast because mm -hmm. it's a different way to speak but yeah. i thought everybody knew how to do this kind of journaling i thought well this is so i mean it was obvious to me so i thought it was obvious to everyone but i would go speak and teach people how to do it mm. And then they would like get all this breakthrough, you know, like pastors. I mean, people that are way ahead of me in a lot of ways, they would be like really shocked by it. And I was like, God, doesn't everyone know how to do this? And he was like, yeah. no, Lindsay, I gave this to you. Wow. So, um, so I, I talk about it in my book, but it's really about like talking to God, mm. you know, in your journal. So not just journaling out your thoughts, yeah. but, but talking to God about your thoughts, wow. you know? And so I always take people through the exercise of like, right? Like me dot dot, like colon, me dot dot, like, like in a movie script, like, a, mm. like the dialogue in a movie script, me dot dot. God, what do you love about me most? Mm. And then I tell him, right, God dot dot. Because when you write God dot dot underneath it, it is an expectation that he is going to speak to you. Wow. And so I teach people like a dialogue format of journaling with God. Mm. And it is like, I'm a high extrovert, ENFP, like, I mean, lo external processor to the masses, you know? Yeah. But I've never honestly felt lonely in my whole life mm. because I feel not necessarily the tingly presence of God. You know, I know there's different kinds of manifestations yeah, of yeah. the presence of God. Mm -hmm. And although I love that too, but I feel his nearness. I feel mm. him sitting right across the table from me. Wow. Right. And yeah. I, I used to be so weird, but I used to like go on these dates with God and <laughs> I would like go awesome. to like super beautiful restaurants. I love yeah. beauty. You know, so I go to these like gorgeous restaurants that I wanted to go to, you know, mm -hmm. and I would take my journal and I would just, I never felt weird. I would sit at a table and I would literally just talk to God. You know, like I was on a legit date with like my dad or wow. a, my husband or whatnot. I've heard of that. Yeah. yeah. I've had a few friends say, it, say it's that. So, it sounds cheesy, but I'm telling you. Yeah. The, the feeling of love that you get. Yes. When you connect with God in that way yeah. is kind of next level. I've not yeah. thought it any other way. And yeah. I've been in a lot of like, you know, Holy Spirit filled places. And mm -hmm. I've never felt the love of God like I do when I journal with him in this way. Yeah. That is so revelatory. I it's, love that. It's really special. And I've seen it help people. Like mm -hmm. I, I'm just, I've been beta testing it for years, you know, fear. <laughs> yeah. But I, I get these little groups together and I'll kind of beta test it because I create these courses around it and stuff. And like Fascinating. these people, like they get crazy breakthrough. They're wow. like, I've never felt God's love like this. I didn't know he cared like this. And, you know, it, it brings people a lot of um, freedom is yeah. usually the word they end up at peace and uh, I bet I, a lot of inner healing too, you know, I think it does. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think it really helps them get to what I call ouchies, you know, <laughs> so great. ouchies. Cause wow. I like, I like to go back to the child like stuff because yeah. I mean, the thing is, is, you know, I used to be pretty intense about trying to get deliverance and fixing myself, mm. you know, like I was super intense. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah. And God had to kind of like light like, me up a little bit, you know? Slow so, down. Exactly. He's like, <laughs> wow, Lens, okay. You know, so I was kind of mean to myself trying to fix myself. I see. It's not really healthy. Mm. So he kind of had to show me how healing can be fun. That's what he's shown me recently. Like healing mm. can be fun. It doesn't have to be so intense, mm. you know? And there are moments where maybe there needs to be some intense stuff, but, but mainly healing can be fun. And so he's just shown me how like, you know, talking with him about my pain yeah. each day, you know, how he can just bring so much like encouragement to me mm. and so much love into my life. And it's like, it's just the best thing. It's like my favorite thing in the whole world is wow. journaling with God. And I really, I don't go anywhere without it. I have my little iPad back here that I journal in okay. also. Okay. I use the little pen, you know? So you're, you're more of the digital journaler? Well, okay, Kelly, I live in this tiny place in Santa Monica, uh -huh. so I ran out of space for journals. Okay, gotcha. So I had yeah. to get an iPad, but like you can still handwrite you yeah. know, on the iPad because it's important to handwrite. Yeah, I know. Like, I'm, I'm an old school guy, you know. Like, uh, I'm the dude who like actually will get on Amazon and order like a quill pen and like the yeah. ink, and, you know. You should. And so I used to write a lot more, and that's when I kind of invested and got like really, like, you know, I love the the parchment paper, yeah. you know, or like burn the corners and like amazing. a love letter to the Lord Aww. or, or I, I, my wife, when I first started courting her, I used to write her romantic love letters that Aww. were on burnt parchment paper with quill pen. And, you know, so she felt like, you know, so, <laughs> so sweet. yeah. So I, I used to do a lot more writing and I just got away from me. It's mm. like, I don't know what happened, you know, just like, so recently the Lord just starts saying, you need to start reading more and journaling more. And so I started, um, picking up a, a lot of awesome content and um, and then just start writing, and, you know, and just having a little bit breakthrough through writing. So I guess I've been spiritually clogged up and I couldn't even, you know, write music. You know, I got upstairs oh, wow. in my studio, started trying to write and it was just like nothing was flowing, man. So I said, you know, we're going to take it one day at a time yeah. and we're going to just chisel away mm -hmm. and uh, hopefully one day un uncork that dam you know that's all plugged up and mm -hmm. and let the river flow so again in my life so Aww, yeah yeah I love so i that. love this um could you expound just a tiny bit a little bit about like the, the inner world I, I love that how you kind of just talked a little bit about that could you expound on that just just a little bit for, for the folks listening yeah well I yeah. think it's really fun and fascinating I don't think it has to be this like dark and scary hunting for yeah. demon type situation right, you know yeah. like um, so the subtitle of my book is how God renews relationships by crushing your inner critic yeah right so I love we all have that <laughs> you know <laughs> I had a big mean one so I've yeah. been through a long process and I think sometimes God delivers you out of certain things quickly and other things he takes you through a process because he knows that you need to know the process to help other people through mm. the process. And so he just started to show me like, so he had me write the book before he gave me the title, okay. which none of the gurus would tell you to do. And it was kind of a scary thing because I'm like, yeah. what's the title? And right, he's like, yeah. I'll give it to you and it's time. You yeah. know? And I was like, eh. but um, so it ended up being, though, like the 10 lies that keep us from love. Mm. So I talk about lies of fear, okay. lies of worry, lies of rejection, unworthiness. Um, fantasy, just these lies that mm. like will will get into our soul, yeah. and it causes problems, mm. you know. And and so you know, um, once you expose the lie, then you can ask love about it, love himself, mm. who's God, right? So that's why I teach people to like you know process their emotions through writing, okay. but then you come across something and you're like, oh, what do I do with that? Well, ask God about it, you know, mm -hmm. like ask love. And my favorite part of the book is um, when I was writing a blog one time years ago, I came across, I was writing a blog about worry. Mm -hmm. Because I used to think when you said like, I worry about you, that means I love you. Because oh. we all have these different broken views of what love is, right? Yeah, that's true. And yeah. so um, we're all doing our best, but no one has this all figured out, you mm -hmm. know, except God. And so I looked up the word worry in the dictionary. Now, this is like 10 years ago. Yeah. And it said to torment, to tear at the throat. Wow. 
I know. And I was like, what? Like, I always thought worry meant like, yeah. I love you. You yeah. know, I'm like, torment is not love. So yeah. I took a screenshot of it because I couldn't believe that's what it said. Yeah. Now, fast forward today, if you look up worry in the dictionary, that's not what it says. Mm -hmm. And so I started to wonder, like, who changed the, the you know, the definition of this word? Mm. And I looked up like the original language, like, or what that word meant, like in like old English and old German. And it yeah. said these words like to tear at the throat, to mm. torment. And I thought, that's what worry means? And it was just amazing to kind of realize like some of these things that society or culture thinks are just normal, it's just your normal emotions. Like if you really dig into what that means, mm -hmm. like you're gonna see why it's affecting you the way it's affecting you, you yeah. know? And then you realize that worry is a branch of fear. Yeah, Anxiety is a branch of fear. And I'm not talking about chemical issues. I know that's a different thing, but you know, if we can recognize what fear sounds like inside of our heads, yeah. inside of our hearts, yeah. we can take that fear to love and let him help us overcome it. Mm. And that's really how I've gotten free. And I mean, Kel, like I won't go into all the details, but I've had like, like a lot of the bad things that people talk about having happened to them in life have mm. happened to me in life. Yeah, right. So right. I had deep anxiety, deep depression, really yeah. deep stuff that I just never really got treated by any kind of medical professional. Mm. Um, not to say you shouldn't, I just didn't. And, um, but God really walked me out of that. Mm. I mean, and still sometimes does. Just yesterday I was talking to him in my journal and I'm like, I don't wanna be sad. Yeah. And he's like, it's okay to be sad sometimes, Lens. Yeah. yeah. You know, he's very kind. The Bible says it's his kindness that leads us to repentance. That's right. Yeah. Well, repentance means to change your mind. Mm -hmm. So it's his kindness that leads us to change our mind. Right, right. And like, so if we can communicate with him about all our feelings, it sounds kind of obnoxious, but I've been doing it for like 10 years. I've taught, you know, probably hundreds of people to do it and I've mm -hmm. seen it work. So I'm on to something. I'm not saying I got it all figured out, but I'm on to something. <laughs> you know? something. I'm on to yeah. something, a little bit of something. Yeah. Um, it just, it really frees people up from mm -hmm. carrying all those, what I call ouchies internally. Mm -hmm. Like they can get them out mm -hmm. and then talk to God about them. And it says in the Bible, he's the counselor. That's right. He is a counselor, yeah. you know? I love therapy, P.S. But <laughs> so, you know, I mean, I, I, I've done a ton of deliverance, a ton of sozo, a ton of inner healing. I still do that stuff. You know, I'm not like, and this negates all that. Mm -hmm. But this is 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Yeah. Our father who loves us more than anyone is ready and willing to talk to us about anything mm. at any moment. Yeah. And it's so comforting yeah. to know that we have that. You know, and that he is love. Mm. And so it's kind of comical because I've, I've never been in love romantically, mm -hmm. but I just experienced this love of God in such a rich way that I do want to get married when I meet like the most amazing, you know, person God He's wants coming. to meet. He's coming, Cal. He's coming. Um, but until then, I just feel so satisfied with God mm -hmm. and his love. That's so good. Yeah. In a, what better way to receive love from the source of love? He is love. You know, so you learn to receive love from him and then you learn to love yourself more. So yes. then when you find that person that God has designed for you, it's like you know how to love them because you've learned love from him and learned to love yourself in return. And now you know how to love them. You know, so you know, God's just preparing you. You're on that journey. I'm on that journey. And that's what he told me, like, Lynn's like, you know, you know, if you learn love from me, mm -hmm. you're going to know what it looks like. That's right. You know? Yeah. And I'm like, you're right, God. You know? So mm -hmm. it's just like, and he told me one time, I thought this was so cute, but he said, Linz, like, my love is like the cake and your mm -hmm. husband's love is going to be like the frosting. Mm -hmm. But if you look at your husband's love like the frosting, it's really going to ruin the whole cake. Wow. And it's like so simple and kind of like funny, but yeah. he's just so sweet at getting like his point across, you mm -hmm. know, to really help you become the person that he's created you to be, mm -hmm. you know? And so it's like my favorite thing. That's so good. I love <laughs> it. That's awesome. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about your podcast? Yeah. Yeah. So you just, is it, how long has this been going? Yeah. So it was, um, 2020, Okay. you know, uh, and 
I was starting to like get invitations to speak on stages and stuff, you mm-hmm. know, a little conference, little small conferences. So I love it. It's like mm-hmm. my favorite thing. So you, you're, you're a public speaker as well. Well, I mean, yeah. I don't know if I sh- I don't know if I am that, but I enjoy doing it. I think you are. It. I enjoy doing it. I think it. you are. You're here today. <laughs> You're speaking to a ton of people oh out my, there. Yes. <laughs> um, but I do. I love it. I, I feel God's pleasure when I'm on stage and can can just speak into people. It's so fun for me. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that all got shut down, and I just felt like I had three prophetic words actually from mm-hmm. three different people that yeah. said like I think you start a podcast, and I thought mm-hmm. I don't have to start a podcast, you know. Wow. Um, but God has all the wisdom, and James 1, 5 is my favorite scripture. Yeah. If you lack wisdom, ask God, and he'll give it to you without measure. That's right. So I asked him, and he's so kind to answer. He just showed me little by little, tiny little steps, you know, like mm. use your cell phone, use your computer, like nothing, you know, nothing of this cool, like, um, this cool studio. But, yeah. but it was okay. It was what God showed me, and it was so fun, like, I just did what he said step by step yeah. and ended up like doing it for about three years mm-hmm. and had amazing people like Kelly Easter on it. <laughs> yeah, and, that's uh, right, yeah. Just amazing people. It was so fun. Yeah. And I realized I love interviewing people. It's mm-hmm. so fun for me. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, well, basically I just did, I don't know how deep you want me to go into it. Yeah. But, um, what I heard God say was do it in season so it can change with you, so it can grow with you, okay. that's what he said. So, okay, what do I do, God? Mm-hmm. And he said, season one, do it on what you know. Do it mm-hmm. on your book. So season one was just, you know, love himself, mm-hmm. welcomes you or something like that. Yeah. But then in the middle of that, he's like, why don't you go interview a couple of your friends who love me but mm-hmm. work in Hollywood? And I was like, yeah, okay. I've seen a few of those. Yeah, and so yeah. I, you know, I interviewed my friend Sonia, who you know. Um, okay, yeah, yeah. Sonia Kanoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And those were you like, I like interviewing cute people. <laughs> <laughs> you guys had your like drinks and oh, they yeah. out. I was like, oh, look at this. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was more recent, but yeah. But so I started out and I interviewed Sonia. I interviewed another friend who worked in Hollywood and mm-hmm. I had so much fun interviewing them. So yeah. season two, God's like, why don't you do more of that and call it Jesus in Hollywood? Mm-hmm. So I started doing that and it was super fun. And then season three, um, I love inner healing. So God said, why don't you do the inner healing of the artist mm, and talk to people about like their recovery or their, mm-hmm. you know, their kind of healing journey and talk to therapists. Cause I love therapists. Mm-hmm. So I did that it was super fun. And then season four, I did the storytelling business still about Jesus. And, and then I took a break. I needed my own healing and I took a break and I said, God, but what problem do I solve for people with my podcast? Like mm. what problem am I solving? And God said, it's on the cover of your book. And he said, the inner critic. Mm. So then he told me, do uh, an expose on the inner critic, which I thought was kind of clever, you know, all my cleverness comes from the Lord. Um, And so (laughs) I interviewed people like our friend Georgie, um, people that maybe are paid because of their beauty Mm -hmm. or maybe, you know, but they still have an inner critic. And I wanted to expose Mm -hmm. this lie that women especially maybe look at people who are stunningly beautiful, who are paid because of their beauty, Mm -hmm. and then hear the true story that they also still have an inner critic. Mm. Kind of break this lie that like, if I looked like her, I wouldn't hate myself, you know? Or wouldn't be so mean to myself or whatnot. So that season went on for like 30 episodes. Wow. Yeah, so and so now it's kind of turned into like a more of a YouTube show mm-hmm. around my book, and I'm gonna go after more about like what is love. Mm, yeah, right. Yeah, I saw yeah. a little bit of that. Yeah, and I want to talk to like people in and around the entertainment industry mm-hmm. that are Christians about like love. Yeah, I want to be almost like an investigative reporter, you know? <laughs> right. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I like that concept. Um, I was gonna ask you. Uh, what is it to be an on fire Christian in the industry called Hollywood? Like, what what is it like to be an on fire Christian in this whole industry? Because um, there's a lot of different answers out there, you know, from different people. But I would love to hear from you uh, as you were called here, and it became more clear what God was calling you to. You know, what do you feel like? your journey has been? Yeah, it is a good question. Um, You know, I think it's been different over the years. I think as I've gotten more mature, Mm -hmm. went through some pain, (laughs) 
felt ran into some brick walls, you know, yeah. you learn a lot yeah. and you grow and develop. And that's the whole point, I think. But um, in the end, I think it's about just enjoying your life mm -hmm. and being authentic to who you really are, not like not trying to change people to Jesus, like out of fear or duty or guilt mm -hmm. or out of, you know, God, you know, told me, you know, I mean, you, you know, we don't performance, I guess would be the other word, yeah. but also not hiding your faith, mm -hmm. just being you, yeah. you know? And I would say I have run into the most amazing situations where God has almost kind of used me without me even really meaning to say anything mm -hmm. and has brought the most fruit that way. Mm -hmm. And so I think as I've just kind of relaxed into who God made me to be, enjoy my life, he will divinely connect me with people that he wants to touch and I'm not even like meaning to do anything. And I just get to be like a tiny little participant in what God's doing in someone's life. And it just, it is like my favorite, it's the most amazing thing. Yeah. And so for me, I really believe it's like, it's like just staying really close to God. Yeah. Staying really close to God mm -hmm. and letting him love on you, love him, and then just go do your life mm -hmm. and, and just pay attention to what he's saying yeah. in the midst of you doing your thing. Yeah. Yeah, I was I was having a little bit of this talk with our last guest in um yeah, I don't know. It's I feel like years ago a lot of believers, you know, were called to Hollywood. It was kind of like a covert thing. Mm. And it was like go undercover and mm. burn for Jesus mm. and like, you know, watch God move, you know, in Hollywood and but now it's, I don't know, it feels like it's changed. Mm. It's like we're in a new season of heaven. Mm. And it's like, I don't know, maybe God is calling us to be more bold and courageous and outward with it mm. versus hiding and, you know, because I even, my, even myself, I found myself very discreet. Like I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say that I was a Christian until I was like asked mm. or like, Somehow God came up in a conversation, and then I was like, <laughs> "My time, my time!" It's like, Release the fire hose. <laughs> Over time, I learned to trickle and do a little at a time. Yeah, yeah. And then that's when I start to see impact. You know, I experienced a lot of cool encounters on sets and and with other actors, or producers, things like that. But um, and I actually would get upset or bummed when something spiritual or supernatural didn't happen i felt like i failed oh yeah and i was like well no you went and did the job you know you were paid to do a job and yeah. you went and did that and it was like yeah but i didn't minister the gospel <laughs> like i wanted to you know and so um or like they would go out and party and then i would be like nah i'm not doing that you know yeah. it's like you know and then that led people to ask like why aren't you coming out with us and doing some of this stuff right you know and i was like well i don't want to put myself in a compromising position and so that kind of let them know like oh okay he must be religious and i was like yeah, yeah i'm religious i have a relationship with god and, yeah. and that's when i would come out with it but um i don't know now it just feels different mm -hmm. and so i'm still discovering it what what god is doing next uh especially there's a lot of people who tried to move away from la and, and hollywood the industry and get out of here when things were shutting down. Mm. Um, but God wouldn't let them, including myself. I tried like five times. <laughs> like I even had a job offer in Texas and I just, I even tried, but I just, God wouldn't let me. Mm. And so I feel like he has this like remnant that's supposed to stay here and be like frontliners. And mm. like, there's, there's like something switching, you know, there's mm. like a shift happening and uh, that's why I asked that question, because I, I really do feel like there's a shift and it's like, oh, you don't have to be afraid anymore. Let it be what it is. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, you know, we're laid down lovers for Christ and we're here and we're also like producers and actors and, you know, screenplay writers or, you know, musicians and we do it unto God, you know. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I don't know. There's I don't know. I just was curious your thoughts on that, because I, I really feel there's just some kind of shift happening, you know. I still don't know the the entirety of it, but I'm I'm on that journey. You know? mm. 
Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's it's been really fun. Like, but you're right. I thought it was just a shift in me. Like I mm-hmm. thought, oh, I was just the one that was kind of scared to talk about it. And then I got over my fear and now I'm not as scared. Yeah. But maybe it's more of a corporate thing, you know, because I do feel just like not pushing it on anyone, but not not hiding it, you know? Yeah, right, yeah. And like, you know, let people share their experience. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of times I run into people in the new age and stuff and, mm-hmm. you know, they'll talk about all their things and I listen and love mm-hmm. on them and then I talk about my thing. Oh, then, yeah. you know, da-da-da-da, and I talk about God and so it's, you know, it, I've seen some really cool stuff. Like, yeah, I'm just like, okay, God, you know. Yeah, he's moving, he's moving through that. You, you can't be afraid of that, you know, like you said, because you are going to see the new age things and, I mean, I, I knew a friend who was like on sets doing Germanic rooms and reading oh. fortunes with the the bone runes mm-hmm. or through old bones. Wow! Yeah, and that's how we got into conversations, and and we became close. And mm-hmm. he invited me out to like this whole his you know um, significant other is like you know a famous singer and everything, and and uh, in Europe and. And he invited me out to the session where VH1 was coming out to film, and it was like a spiritual session in his garden. He's also like a master gardener. Oh wow! So he planted gardens for like millionaires and stuff, and wow. so he had his own garden here in LA. And he asked me to show up, and I was like, "Cool, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll do it, man." Yeah. I, I didn't mm-hmm. do everything, but right. I just did like some of the stuff, and and it was really cool. Um, but we got to have some conversations through that, you know, so mm-hmm. yeah. that, that you wouldn't have elsewhere. Because there's some people who just they ain't going to really go to church. All right. So we have to be the church. I mean, we are the church. Yeah. It's not we have to be. We, we are the church, you yeah. know. And I think we have to remember that. Yeah. And that's, I think that's something, that's why God calls so many, you know, his children here. Yeah. To, to make an impact. Because he's like, hey, remember, you are the church. So take the church to them. They might not come through the doors, but you can be that bridge where they now say, okay, I think I want to go and worship God on Sunday morning now, mm-hmm. you know, because of relationship, the yeah. community. Yeah. So be their community, be their relationship, be that bridge. You know, sometimes I look at this like doorways. We're doorways to, to Jesus. Mm. And so, or we're reflections. Mm. We're like little prisms of, of light. Mm. And people yeah. come to Jesus through us, through our lives, you know, yeah. reflections of him. So I love that. I yeah. I couldn't agree more. Like, I, I honestly used to be pretty scared of that stuff. So yeah. I wouldn't, I would be like, oh, my gosh, you know, like kind of just a little too worried about the devil, mm-hmm. to be honest. Yeah. And, and now, like, you know, I'll be in those situations where I'm the only Christian and there's a group of people around me who are talking about the new age stuff. And and mm-hmm. I'll hear God speak to me like, Lens, like you have authority over this. You don't need to be scared of this. Yeah. You know, and then you can kind of like. Again, I think sometimes the reason we get a little frantic and like mm-hmm. we need to like control people is because we're, you know, we're scared, mm-hmm. right? But if we know who we are in Christ, like we're above this, not in a above weird way, but like we we have authority over this stuff. So they can talk about it and we can love on them. We can yeah. listen to them, you know, and then we can share a little bit about what we believe. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't have to be this like weird controlling, like I need yeah. to make you a Christian because I'm scared of what you're talking about. Right. Which yeah. I think sometimes happens. It does. Yeah. And did for me. I mean, mm-hmm. I used to operate that way, yeah. you know, but yeah. he's just recently kind of taught me like, Lynn's like, mm-hmm. You can sit in this room, you can listen, you can talk to me while they're talking and you can love on them. And, you know, mm-hmm. it's really special. And recently I did have this one guy who was like, I want to go to church. I want to go to your church. Yeah, and I was like, right. come, we'd love to have you. You know, yeah. so it's kind of interesting how God works. Yeah, the new way of evangelism, huh? It's so cute. Instead yeah. of sitting on a street corner <laughs> preaching on a soapbox, you know, like just living your life and then yeah. somebody sees and it's like, hey, I want to come to church with you. Like, great. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's really cute. That's really awesome. Mm-hmm. In light of the moves of God that are happening in the earth today, and you know, through like places like the Asbury Revival and, you know, other, other revivals throughout the earth, um, I just found out there's a revival in Pasadena. I didn't know that was happening. But in light of all these things, what do you feel the state of the church is? 
You know, I'm probably someone who focuses a little more like on the inner world, inner to world. be honest with yeah, you, yeah. than I am about like what's going on in the right. state of the church. The body I, of Christ. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't, I hope that doesn't sound like I'm self focused. Mm -hmm. I'm focused on people's internal world because I just mm -hmm. think it really affects a lot of other things. Mm. Um, so, you know, some people are called to different things. Mm -hmm. um, so, I don't spend as much time thinking like macroly, I don't mm -hmm. know if that's a word, but you know, like, in that way of like, what's going on in the state of the church? You know, mm -hmm. I think what's going on inside someone's soul. Mm -hmm. Like that's yeah. just the way that God created me to think. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I don't really have major opinions on mm -hmm. it. I think that, you know, my hope for the world, my hope for the body of Christ is that they really experience the like one-on-one -on -one relationship with God, Yeah, you know, right. with Father God, with Jesus, with mm -hmm. Holy Spirit, that they really... Communion. Yeah, they really experience that. And just like, because I think intimacy for me is like kind of everything. You know what everything I mean? Everything should flow out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so like, that's where a lot of my healings come from. Mm -hmm. That's where a lot of my... Um, a lot of my problems have been solved, to mm -hmm. be honest with you. Um, so I just have a real heart for that. So mm -hmm. when I think of revival, like I think of revival on the inside. Inward. Yeah, yeah inward revival, you know. Yeah, that's, that's why this is the season I'm in right now. Somebody yeah. uh, talking to Pastor Gary the other day from oh, Vintage. Yeah. And he was like, what's going on? And he was sharing what's going on with him. I was like, you know, in light of all the revivals around the world today, I'm kind of going after revival in my own heart. Yeah. Personally. Yeah. And that's what the Lord showed me. I was like, I'm going after renewal in my spirit. Yeah. He was like, mmm, that's so good, <laughs> mate. <laughs> that's just the way I think, too. Like, yeah. I just kind of think that way. And yeah. maybe it's because that's how I encountered God. I didn't yeah. really encounter God in these revivals. I think however we encounter God sometimes is what we then kind of you know, we kind of follow. Mm -hmm. And I just encountered God kind of more inwardly. Mm -hmm. And I've always been part of a church and community and all of that great stuff. But so I think that's my hope for people is they just get back to that, like that loving relationship with God that mm -hmm. can really walk with them day by day mm -hmm. and just help them and just encourage them and lead them to where he wants them to go, mm -hmm. you know, and do and, and not not because we're little soldiers. I don't really like the soldier thing, um, personally, mm -hmm. but because like we're his kids and yeah. he loves us yeah. and he has really great things for us all to do yeah. and be a part of. Yeah. And so I want to see people like just come back to who they were originally created to be so they can live that exciting life with God. Mm. Yeah, that's good. Have you have you seen a, a bit of the Asbury revival, like clips and things like that? You know, what are your thoughts on that? Just yeah. seeing like Gen Z going oh, after God. I that's mean. the best. Yeah, yeah, that's my favorite. Like yeah. to see him like reviving that whole generation right, is yeah. so encouraging. That's so, I mean, so amazing. Oh, I just love even it. You know, our church vintage like will have these kingdom comes and the, oh, yeah. the youth kids you they're know, leading they just, the oh, way they're leading it they're <laughs> yeah. out there dancing you know and i just told yeah. these two young girl i was up there with them you know, i'm 45 but i'm like not jumping as like you know high as they are yeah, but i'm yeah. just like feeling their their you know their energy and not weird energy but just their normal energy <laughs> and uh and i walked by them and i just said don't ever change who you are yeah. you know just like it's so exciting yeah. and beautiful to see god like really just getting a hold of that generation because they're going to be the leaders soon. They're the you know? leaders. They are, man. So it's like, okay, like, yeah. let's go, you know. The rest of us will keep trucking along doing our thing, but, mm -hmm. you know, they're the ones. So yeah. I'm really just tickled. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So sweet. Tell us a little bit more, uh, really quick, uh, just about your women's blog. I saw you had, like, a women's blog. I think that's what you referred to a bit earlier, right? Um. Well, yeah, I had a blog for, mm -hmm. like, 10 years. I don't really yeah. write on it anymore, but Not it's anymore. all on my website. Okay, gotcha. It's just like free content yeah. on the website that if people, you know, it's, it's a lot about the blog used to be called putting the pencil down. And oh, cool. Yeah. So like basically learning moment by moment to surrender your life to Christ mm. and walk with him moment by moment, day by day. Wow. And, um, you know, when I say putting the pencil down, I mean like stop trying to write the story of your life. Like, mm. let God write the story of your life That's because good. he's the best author. He really is. Yeah. <laughs> he's the best storyteller. So, again, in order to do that, I think there's things inside of us mm -hmm. in the inner world that get in the way. Yeah. But 
but he'll help us work through that. And then it just brings it, it prunes us basically. And mm-hmm. then we become who we're really created to be. We're yeah. always becoming, it's not like we arrive ever, but, yeah. but like, you know, just learning to walk with him moment by moment, day by day, like stop trying to figure things out. Just let him show you, mm. listen to him, let him show you the way it's way more fun way more fun mm. you know so yeah. that's that's what i've written about on my blog and so yeah it's all on there on my website and stuff Very just cool. for free if people want to dig into that but yeah yeah that's so, awesome yeah yeah i remember the moment i uh was healing over my failed first marriage mm. and uh I, we weren't married she uh, my my ex left me six weeks before the wedding and uh it just broke my heart into a million little pieces. And so I had to put it all back together. Mm-hmm. Uh, one thing I said, it was happened right before I moved to LA. Oh, oh really? And so that was, was like a series oh. of events. Uh, we were planning for the wedding and then uh, doing premarital counseling. And then in the middle of that, she decided to leave and had her dad come and uh, her brothers move her back to Montana. Wow. And so then I was in this brand new apartment that we got for us all these new gifts and wedding stuff. And, and so I figure out how to give this away to some of the ministry school girls and just have people come over and just take this, take that glass. But it's in a box still. Just take it. I don't care. Oh, it's expensive. I don't care. Yeah. You know, or give me five bucks. Give me 10 bucks. I don't care. Just take it, you know. Right. Right. And so I had to um, do all that, lease my apartment out. And then in the middle of that, I just said, you know. I don't want to be like bitter and like angry, you know, in the middle of all that. And so I just was like, I want to, I want to go through inner healing. And so when Bethel offered to pay for my first, you know, counseling session, I was like, yes, and amen, I will do it. And so I went through inner healing so that my, my heart was like, I don't want to step into a new season and be like completely bitter and just dysfunctional. And I can't enjoy what God has for me on the other side. Exactly. And so, um, it was amazing. I did inner healing with like four hours, three and a half, four hours, something like that. And so I was telling, uh, last guest, I I was like late to, to move to LA, Mm. uh, because I just had to make time for that, you know, for God to dig in my soul and pull out all that stuff before it can actually take root because if you leave stuff too long it can yep. take root and so um fast forwarding to me being in la about a year and a half of me being in la i, I woke up one morning i heard the lord say it's time and i was mm. like whoa it's time for what yeah like where are we going what are we doing like you know he was like it's time to start dating again mm. and i was like oh my gosh this is scary you know mm-hmm. and but i just i felt that peace and i was like okay all right. And um, I went on one date with a girl in Azusa. She's amazing. But something, something, there was something in, in my spirit that I just thought, like, I need to pray about something real quick before I start diving in real deep into this thing. So I got back home and I just prayed this prayer and I just said, you know, Lord, I tend to pick the same type of you know, partners for myself where I didn't realize this whole thing of brokenness attracts brokenness. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not calling anybody broken, but I would would find myself in situations where I was always trying to date somebody like maybe needed to be fixed or like has something going on, some sort of brokenness. And I think because I had brokenness within me, I was dating the same type of, you know, Mm -hmm. partners. And so um, my friends pointed that out. I said, you kind of tend to pick the same type of, you know. It's good friends. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it was really good yeah. friends. And, and, and this friend wasn't even super prophetic either. He was mm-hmm. just like, I, I knew it was God. Yeah. And so I was like, no, you're right. So fast forward to now, I just felt um, myself saying, God, I submit this to you. Mm-hmm. And I want you to pick this time. Yeah. I was like, I picked. I've done enough picking. <laughs> and we know where that's. Not worked we out. know where that's landed. <laughs> yeah. And so I said, Lord, I want you to pick uh, for me this time. And I ended up a couple, about a week later, I met my wife, my wow. now wife, Marie. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. He was quick. <laughs> it was very quick. <laughs> so I never went back on a date with that one person because I had found somebody else. And I thought oh, it was cool, you know. Yeah. And so um, there's something about submitting you know, our dreams, our hopes, yeah. our desires, all this stuff that we hold so dear. Yeah. You know, it's something that 
special about submitting that unto the Lord and allowing him to narrate, you know, the script or be the narrator of the story. Exactly. As you said earlier. So that that just brought back to brought brought me back to that moment in my life where I gave him permission to be the narrator, even though he's already the narrator. Of yeah, life. exactly. But it's something about rededicating that. Like, no, I acknowledge you are the narrator. Yeah. And I give you permission to write the story of my life. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. That's so beautiful. I love it. I know yeah. he's he's the best storyteller. Yes. You know, he did all through the Bible. He, he obviously did. values story very much. So, yeah. 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 Especially when you get the garden. The garden is just like, oh man. The Garden of Eden is a special story, and there's a whole lot of like deep meanings in there. If you look at it in Revelations and just what his original intent was, and even throughout history and time, you can see where he was always constantly wanting like that desire to be like the garden again. Uh-huh. You know, even when they built the temples, there had to be a certain plant life, and then mm-hmm. gold, and then cedars, and yeah. you know, it was all kind of symbolism of how he originally intended life to be. So, mm-hmm. I love it. He's a great storyteller. He really is. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, well, you know. So I just, but I think it's moment by moment that we mm-hmm. give that over to him because mm-hmm. there's different seasons. You know, there's things I've really broken through my fears and, you know, and move past, but then there's other things I still fear, Mm -hmm. you know, like for me, romantic love is still a little, a little scary, Mm -hmm. you know? So like, it's always a journey, you know, and it's just whatever kind of fear gremlins he's helping us like (laughs) overcome through his love. Right. Cause the Bible says that perfect love casts out fear. Fear. And I don't believe perfect love comes from people Mm. or, you know, our grandmas who, you know, my grandmas probably love me more than anyone, you know, or like our mamas or dads or kids or wives or husbands. Perfect love is only from God. Mm -hmm. And so as we submit our fears to God, like, and let his love in, it really helps us overcome a lot of those fears. And Mm -hmm. it's a journey, you know, We all learn different things at different times, but yeah. it's a good journey, I think. <laughs> it's awesome. Come yeah. on. Uh, one more question for you. What does worship mean to you? And how do you worship God in your everyday life? Yeah, it's such a good question, Kel, because mm-hmm. like I've been around a lot of musicians in my life. Mm-hmm. And so I felt so guilty, to be honest, that I didn't feel close to God in worship. Mm-hmm. Like some people, it's just their heaven, you yeah, know, it's like, yeah. that's like where they feel. And I would worship God because I knew he was worthy and I love him, mm-hmm. but I didn't feel close to him in worship ever. Mm-hmm. But the way I feel close to God is in complete silence. Yeah. And I'm a high extrovert. Yeah. I'm an external processor. Like yeah. I'm not an introvert at all. Okay. I'm the farthest one on the extrovert scale. Okay, gotcha. So for me to be quiet in stillness yeah. is like supernatural you know it is not Lindsay's personality and so i don't know how god works but for me like just stillness and silence i experience the presence of god Mm. so heavy you know i just so i think for me like turning my attention towards god is what worship is Mm -hmm. and if that means it's in music you're turning your attention towards god that's worshiping him if that Mm. means you are setting time away to be completely silent yeah that's worshiping God. If that means you're washing the dishes and you just turn your attention towards God, mm. like that is worship. It's mm. like, you know, and I've heard this from other people, but it's a heart, it's a heart posture, you know, yeah, but yeah. it really is. It's about turning your attention, you know, towards God. Like mm. even in conversations where, you know, I could think, oh yeah, I'm going to talk to Cal and I'm going to have all these great things to say. Mm-hmm. But in the midst when I'm talking to you, I'm, I'm like, turning my attention to God. That's mm. what do you want me to say? You yeah. know? So that's, I think how I see worship now. Mm-hmm. And I don't feel guilty anymore that I don't feel this like, Oh, when there's music <laughs> playing, you know, like, right, yeah. <laughs> cause I used to carry so much guilt around that. Mm-hmm. And so for me, it's stillness, silence. And then like, you know, writing and stuff, talking with God. Yeah. That's so good. Yeah. I love that. So that's me. <laughs> Come on. I love it. Um, where can people find, your products, your books, uh, your ministry, you know, material, where can they find all that stuff? Yeah, I keep it simple. It's just my website, which is my name, Lindsay Morgan dot mm-hmm. CO dot CO. Yeah. Okay. Dot CO. Lindsay Morgan dot CO. Yes. We'll link that right. in the bottom of the description for y'all to go check her stuff out, <laughs> support her, <laughs> get the book. 
Check out the free vlogs. It's free, guys. It's so. free, guys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah thank that's you. awesome. Aw, thanks for having me, Kel. This was so special. Thanks for coming on. Really fun. Yeah, it's really great to have you here. And um, yeah, for all of you who want to, you know, sew into our ministry and you want to get some cool merch, we have our new shirts out. Here's our little lion shirt here. I love the lion. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's like... It's got this little quote down here at the bottom. What's it say? And it says... Uh, You're reading it upside the down. The wicked run away, and when, on, when one is chasing uh, them, but they, the godly are as bold as lions. Mm. Yeah, I'm reading upside down. Yeah, exactly. That's why I sound like I'm all hooked on phonics. <laughs> but it's got a cool scripture, and yeah, we have a, a bunch of different shirts, so our... Um, God is good line is out. So sometimes you see me wearing those. But yeah, feel free to go support the God is good t-shirt line and the Bold is line shirt I'm wearing. If you whatever you want, we got hoodies, we got Jesus anime hoodies, all that cool crazy gear. So go go check that out and um, yeah, support us. It's cool. Thank you Lindsay for coming on. Thank you. Yeah. And it's such an honor and pleasure to have you here. Aww. We'll have to have you come back on and pack some more stuff. So that'd be awesome. Sounds good. We'll go a little bit deep. We'll go deep. Hey, I like deep. You know, <laughs> deep, and, I, deep and funny are my favorite. Yeah. I think it'd be cool to have you on with a uh, therapist. That'd be so fun. Yeah. Yeah. We'll try, we'll try to line you up. Maybe get Kathleen or something on. Oh, there. I love Kathleen. Yeah. 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 I know, okay. she's amazing. Yeah. Awesome. So powerful. Awesome. Well, blessings. Yeah. Good to see you. Thank you for coming on. Thank you. It's been super fun. Yeah. Bless y'all. Bless y'all. <laughs>